Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel if you're returning. If you're new here, my name is Tori and today I was going to show you a flip of my commonplace book for this year. According to the interwebs, commonplace books are a way to compile knowledge, usually by writing information into books. They have been kept from antiquity and were particularly kept during the Renaissance and in the 19th century. Um, another Google search entry says, a commonplace book is a personal compilation of knowledge, ideas, quotations, and observations collected by an individual. So, um, this is kind of that. Uh, basically, I just have notes on different things. So this was a Skillshare course I was taking. Um, these are image settings in <laughs> uh, Adobe Lightroom on my phone for how I like my images to show up in my Pango Books uh, storefront. Let's see, these are just um, order name tags that I've tipped in from different orders from Shine Sticker Studio. This um, section is notes on a presentation that I was responsible for doing and I just wanted to like talk each point out and walk through it mentally before I gave the presentation. So I went through every single slide of my presentation and wrote down what I wanted to say. Um, and so that was that, and I was feeling extremely overwhelmed during that week. So this is kind of like, I was trying to use up some stickers that were really old and I wanted to um, just get another good look at my week that week. This is the only time I did that in my commonplace book because I had it with me at work for this presentation purpose. Um, I have some pin swatches of my Recollections brush pins. Um, I threw this one away after I swatched it because I just saw how rough it was looking. Like if you can tell that is just dried to death. Um, so, and then I did some Tombow swatches in the beginning of the year and my Tombows have definitely grown since then. Um, and then I have book recommendations from another book I was reading and a quote by Kurt Vonnegut that says, books are sacred to free men for very good reasons and wars have been fought against nations which hate books and burn them. If you are an American, you must allow all ideas to circulate freely in your community, not merely your own. Um, yeah, and I think what I'm gonna do after I'm done commonplacing the book that I am currently working on, so I'm reading through this book called Unstable Masks, whiteness and American superhero comics and you can tell like there are a lot of points that I want to keep for like remember and reference back to so when I get through this book I'm probably going to come back to this um this book and transfer what I still want to see like I, I don't know something about transferring it again every time I write it it sticks more and I'm okay with duplicating the information like that um so yeah not that I plan to like throw this book away but just having that quote again would be powerful in of itself so this is like a family tree I was doing for sims um this was my very unimpressed uh pin swatch of a streaky uniball one and this is another quote from the book I was reading that had the book recommendations that I was writing. Um, over here, this is a book I was reading for work. And for work, I mean like to inform my practice as a librarian, not because I had to. Um, but it was just talking about like how we read and what students in primary school classrooms say about the practice of reading and reading comprehension assessments in their classrooms and why it never ends up connecting for them about why they are assessed on certain things that about like reading comprehension that don't make sense to them. Um, 
so I wrote a bunch of notes on that book because I found it really informative. Um, I don't feel like I would need to transfer this anywhere else because I could just come back to this and it's too much to transfer. So, yeah. <laughs> um, this is another section of notes that I was just wanting to journal about because, or not journal, but like take notes about a book that I was um, reading at the time. This is a recipe for orange cardamom rolls. Um, this is a book I read again for work for my own professional development. It was published in 1994 and it was quite revealing about basically nothing has changed when it comes to people's prejudices. <laughs> um, so yeah. And I have an article from Book Riot, Who Can Be Redeemed? And it's talking about um, redemptive narratives and how powerful, like, why we consider um, some redemption narratives powerful and why some are not and who is redemption for. Um, so, yeah. I just found that article really interesting. And then I have some cutouts from, um, I think Better Homes and Gardens about, like, um, yeah, plants that would work well outside for landscaping. There you go. Uh, I, I came across an article about Molly Ringwald's favorite books, and I thought that was interesting because she has a unique, like, she's had a unique life of, I think, living partly in France, so she's influenced by that culture as well as the American culture. So this was a um, recipe for potato crusted ham and cheese quiche bites, which I just saw that and I know that my husband would like them. <laughs> um, let's see. This is about an article from Neuroscience News regarding um, reading for children, I think. I like, didn't read the title in, but it says encouraging children to indulge in reading for pleasure can enhance their cognitive and mental health during adolescence. This is an NPR author interview with S.A. Cosby. Um, and he was talking about his interpretation of the American South. This is an article from the culture section of BBC. And it's talking about why children or why adults should continue to read children's books and what it um, provides for adults that it does not additionally provide for children. So, for example, if you read a fairy tale as an adult versus when you read it as a child, you're obviously going to walk away with two very different stories. Um, and it kind of goes into the details of why we shouldn't put children's literature away just because we've grown up. Um, and it, I thought it was really powerful, so I wrote it down. Um, I do have a couple of book lists in here. So I have, this is 70 best coming of age books. And I just marked off the ones that I know I've read. And then this is 100 books everyone should read. Or the 100 books of all time. Um, and I marked those off of what I've read. Um, this one is just a quick quote from a short story. A quote from Elizabeth Elliot. Another book I was reading for work purposes, Reframing Disability in Manga. Um, it was really informative, so I had a lot of notes about this one as well, as you can see. And then I go into another Book Riot article about critical thinking in books. Um, what it means and what it, critical reading is versus critical thinking. Um... A recipe for an Earl Grey Bundt cake. I like Earl Grey tea, so this was intriguing to me. Um, this is Making Memories, How We Remember and How Not to Forget by Beth Winehouse. And talking about how we remember and where we store our memories. Um, this was an editor's letter from the Better Homes and Gardens. But an <laughs> side note is that... I don't actively read Better Homes and Gardens. Um, we just have a subscription 
left over um, from the family member who was in the house before us and they keep coming and I don't know, I just pick them up. <laughs> um, but he said we all get from time to time, or I guess I, I don't know what I was gonna say there, but this this section of text was really um, illustrative. So I wrote it down because it was like wallowing in a soup of low confidence, boredom or self doubt. Um, but as I recently advised a good friend who was frozen by all the decisions she had in front of her, it's not about making a perfect pick. It's about selecting even one thing, being decisive and moving forward. The Brits have several sayings that reinforce this idea. It's all in the doing, best to crack on, just get on with it, and of course, keep calm and carry on. I'm not sure why that attitude seems to be part of their national persona. Maybe it was World War II. But I'd like to take a page from their notebook and not let frittering away on the internet waylay me with over-research or the diversions of social media. I found that to be very interesting. Um, and in that same... I think that that um what's the that specific issue of better homes and gardens had like a segment about different home decor professionals and one of them said I give no value or weight to staying current I'm much more interested in being excellent and fun visually and creativity or visually and creatively current is not my goal I was like huh that's interesting. Um, I have another Book Riot article here. Just a couple of notes from that. I did start something up here about arm to the teeth healing through horror, but it, it wasn't what I thought it was. So I only grabbed one thing from it because I thought it was an article, but it was actually a blog post and it wasn't very, it wasn't information I wanted to collect. Um, this one though was so interesting. It was for Lit Hub in September 18th of 2023. And it was called The Spy Who Shushed Me, How Our Government is Removing Our Right to Read in Private. Um, and it kind of goes through the history of why libraries are so staunchly about patron privacy and the beginnings of FBI monitoring of library book checkouts. Um, and there's been like this shadow project called, what is it called? Library Awareness Program? What? I was shook when I read this because I feel like this is something I needed to know. <laughs> um, yeah, Library Awareness Program exposed a vulnerability that librarians have safeguarded for decades, patron privacy. Um, and it gets into like, Privacy isn't stated in the Constitution as a right, but it's considered a enumerated right, is what he says. Um, such rights like the right to travel, the right to vote, the right to marry, and until 2022's Dobbs versus Jackson, women's health decision, the right to an abortion has been have been inferred. Um, some would say made up. So that's really scary if you think about it like people are out here trying to say that they're enumerated rights so like if they're not explicitly stated in the constitution they could argue against it like what anyways it was wild i'll probably copy this one too because i'm not over it <laughs> um yes it just had great quotes in it um a vocab word i didn't really know Censorship and privacy are not opposites. They are fruits of the same naughty vine. <sighs> Anyways, <laughs> it was wild. Um, and I got some uh, recipes here. My husband really likes pineapple. And so I found that very interesting. A pineapple juice pie? It doesn't sound like it would be good. So part of me wants to try it to see if I'm right. <laughs> and then I like almonds so I came across these recipes for um, chocolate almond croissant bread pudding and then cherry almond crumble bars and then they gave a um, recipe for homemade almond paste apparently that's a thing and it's expensive and here's how you can make your own I didn't know that was a thing but that is why we commonplace, right? We collect information. <laughs> and then I started this um, this article, but I was just so over 
this book. I don't know why. Like, it was not giving the serotonin anymore. And I had, like, this many pages left. And I was just like, no, I'm done. I'm done. Um, so I said, meh, I'm over it. And then I moved and to my mental health planner for that last article because it's talking about seasonal depression and um one of the well I guess I can share it so it's talking about one of the um let's see falling into fall um embrace the uncertainty of this season of change and it was a New York Times article about seasonal depression and then um just a couple of things like autumn is the season when we work on our acceptance of uncertainty intolerance of uncertainty is a part of being human everyone has it on some level and it's changeable one way to build tolerance is to lean into it to cultivate uncertainty rather than run away from it the avoidance of suffering produces suffering um so yeah, I just found this article interesting and I wanted to take note or to like transcribe it. Um, autumn will always, will probably always hold some whisper of decay and mor mortality for humans, but embracing that sadness is important. If you're always trying to avoid difficult feelings, you might end up also cutting yourself off from love and richness and sweetness. This is how life is, sweet and sad, poured from the same vessel and equal measure. So yeah, on that note, that is my first fully, almost fully completed commonplace book. Um, it, I don't think there's really a rule about how to do this. I'm sure somebody has said that there are, but rules are meant to be broken. So, <laughs> um, I just... I collect the information that I like to collect in here. And the next commonplace book that I've already started, I shared in my last bit, one of my last videos, um, is the Hobonichi, um, A5 notebook, uh, with a Tamataro Makino cover. And like I said, this is where I've been commonplacing passages from Unstable Masks in here. Um, and that's pretty much been what I've been doing. I have added some reflections in as I go. Um, but yeah, and I've been using, I have created kind of a little bit of a code. I know a lot of people have been inspired by Megan Rhiannon. Um, and I found these sheets on Amazon and I did not realize how freaking huge they were till they came in the mail. And I was like, that's really excessive. But... I have a bit of a a key here. So work, personal reading, miscellaneous, mental health, point of discovery, and ephemera. Um, and that just means like, so for here, um, in my key, I'm going to mark this as a point of discovery because it's offering um, more resources that I can look up. So I'm going to just stick this off to the side and that will give me like a visual cue that, hey, this is more stuff you can find. And then I have, you know, I started this with work, right? So work, and I'm not going to add this again throughout all this because that would, in my opinion, be a little bit of a waste. Um, but I have like, this is something I want to look up about James Baldwin writing and talking and then, yeah, so I've really been enjoying this. Um, I'm digging it. <laughs> and I am looking forward to getting through this book. It has so many salient points and just things I want to remember for my own reading, for my own um, practice of librarianship, all that jazz. So that is the 2024, I guess, kind of commonplace book um I'm really not in a rush to fill it up because I like it so much um but you know it's not like Hobonichi is not going to be making more of these so if I want another one I can go get one anyways if you made it this far thank you so much for spending some time with me I hope this gave you some insights into what my commonplacing practice looks like and inspired you to maybe look into doing some yourself 
and I hope you will consider subscribing to this channel if you're not already subscribed and that you'll give this video a thumbs up to help my channel grow. And last but not least, I will see you in the next one. Bye!